This is a trick you've just got to be doing in Bubble. You've just got to. Let me show you why. We've got our community social media app. We can create a post and you might be able to post something a little inappropriate for the community, but that doesn't matter. What does matter is you might want to promote your post. Promoted posts go to the top of the feed and you can decide here if you want to promote your post for one day, three days or seven days. Depending on how long you promote your post for, there's going to be an associated cost. So we have to calculate that in our application somewhere. So here's what we're going to do. This promotion duration, this is drawing from an option set. An option set called promotion duration. We've got three options here and we've got a cost in credits. Okay, so one day is going to cost one credit, three days is going to cost two credits, and seven days is going to cost four credits. And this is what we want to do. We want to take some number of credits and we want to multiply that by the cost per credit, right? Pretty straightforward. So the cost per credit is something that we could store, for example, in our database. I might have an admin config data type here, and it's going to have one field called a credit cost, which is a number type field. And I'm going to create one admin config thing in my database right now. And let's just say the cost per credit is $4 for four pounds, wherever you are. And so now I've got some text down here that's going to tell the user how much it's going to cost them to promote their post for a certain number of days. So I could do something like the promotion selection option from our drop down, which has a credit cost, as we just saw. Each one of our promotion duration, we should probably call it promotion length options, has a cost in credits. So we could take the, that credit cost and just multiply that by. Now we just find that admin config thing, right? So we do a search for that admin config thing. And what I always like to do in these situations is actually search for it by its unique ID. That will actually cause Bubble to do essentially a retrieval of this one item in the database rather than a search for a whole bunch of things in the database where those searches cost more workload than the retrieval. So we're going to do a retrieval and to do a retrieval, we actually use the unique ID. So I'm going to paste in here the unique ID. Obviously you'd want one of these in dev and live mode. So what I would normally actually do here is go, are we in the live version or not? Format that as text. If we're not in the live version, right, so isn't live version, then we add the development unique ID for this app config. Otherwise, we're going to paste in the unique ID as if we were in live mode. But since we're just doing development, I'll just leave this as it is. So we're going to search for that admin configs. So there's only going to be one item there that meets that unique ID. And that's obviously going to have a credit cost associated with it. So we're essentially going to take this credit cost, which is four, and then we're going to multiply that by the credit cost for one of these options. And then we can actually do something nice like format this as a currency. Okay, so I had to refresh, so I couldn't tell everyone I was bored, so that's a shame. So I'll just update everybody about that and decide that's something that I want to promote. As I choose one of these options, look, one day is going to cost $4. Three days are going to cost me eight, seven days. Promotion is going to cost me $16, right? But now, 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 I'm actually so desperate for social attention that I want to promote one of the original organic posts that I created. So I've got this little three dot menu. I can click that for one of the posts that I've created and promote it. And then we've got this other interface that we want to use in our application that really highlights the benefits of promoting. And for each of them, I actually want to display the cost. So I want to do that calculation again, essentially, right? I need to do it three times over. I need to do it for this one and for this one and for this one. And so what am I going to do? I'm going to have to rewrite this expression, right? So I'm going to have to go to the place where I actually want to write this expression, which is on this text element here. And I'm going to have to rewrite the whole thing. So in this context, the parent groups promotion length option, and now I have to take the credit cost and then I'm going to multiply that. And now I've got to do the search for expression again for that admin config object, right? I've got to find the unique ID again, right? I've got to I've got to repeat myself. I've got to do a whole bunch of stuff here. And if you've followed my content for any period of time, you will know that one of the things that I harp on about a lot is not repeating yourself. 
Okay, this is a lot of work for us to do here to repeat all of this. And also if anything changes, let's say on our original cost calculation down here, what if I wanted to offer some kind of temporary discount, right? I would actually have to now update this expression here to multiply this by whatever the discount is. And I'd have to add it to that other place as well now, right? Where we're displaying the cost here as well, okay? So to not repeat ourselves in this context, we're gonna use a reusable element property to store this expression here. And then we can reuse it throughout our application. How do we do that? Let's create a new reusable element. And since this is essentially just some kind of logic, right? I like to use a naming convention like this. And we can call this something like the price calculator. And just as a little bit of housekeeping to set this up, we'll set the background style to be nothing, just to be extra safe, we'll set the opacity to be zero, and we'll just set the maximum width and the maximum height to zero pixels. Okay, so it's essentially nothing. It's not even a pixel. This is just a place for us to create this calculation. So remember what our calculation is, right? It's a number of credits multiplied by the cost per credit. It's a fairly simple calculation. In our particular application, but in your application, it's obviously gonna be a little bit different. That number of credits for us is going to come from the credit cost for a promotion length option. But for simplicity, we can just treat it as a number value, okay? So we'd think about these two things, the number of credits and the cost per credit as inputs to our calculation, right? It's like a mathematical formula that we're writing here and it's got two inputs, two variables, right? If you can think back to algebra, we've got two variables here in our algebra formula and we want the processing, the calculation to happen within the context of this reusable. So to add these inputs, to allow these variables to be fed into this reusable element, we're gonna use properties. So I'm gonna add two properties. One of them, we're just gonna call the number of credits. I'm gonna keep this example really simple. And this is gonna be a dynamic value and it's gonna be a number type value, okay? And it's not optional, right? Our users always have to add a number of credits, okay? Now there's another import or there's another variable here that we need, that's the cost per credit. That actually doesn't need to come from the outside. It's always gonna come from the same place, right? The same place in our application, which is this admin config object in our database. And we know how to get that admin config because we wrote it before when we were outlining the scenario here, we're doing a search for admin configs with a particular unique ID. And so we can actually do this search within our new Prouse calculator object. And now in what kind of place within the bubble editor can we configure this search? Well, a group, a group uh, can allow us to hold on to data. It's a container for data. So we can actually call this, and you can literally just call this like var for variable or data for data. It doesn't really matter whatever naming convention that you wanna use, we'll use variable. This is our variable cost per credit. And we know that is a number type field. And then here in this data source, this is where we do the search, the retrieval of that admin config object. So we do a search for, this is the same thing that we wrote earlier, that admin config object. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna find it by its unique ID, right? As I said, this is actually better for workload. That's sort of an aside, but the point here is that you might have some expression that you have to write in a particular way that you don't wanna reuse in multiple places. So it makes sense to just write it in one place. Remember we said that we're doing it this way where we're gonna retrieve one particular admin config object with this unique idea if we're in development. And then for this one, we would add the live mode admin config unique ID. And since this variable is set up to hold on to a number, then we need to actually set it to be a number type value, that credit cost, okay? What I would actually probably do here is I would actually separate out these two things one being the admin config object. I would set this to be an admin config object. So the expression would just be like this, the first item. And then this cost per credit, that would actually just look for the admin config object that we're already pulling into that other variable group and grab the credit cost. And if you're really ahead of the curve, what you'd actually do is you'd put this admin config variable inside of its own reusable element. But we're getting a little bit too ahead of ourselves, a little bit too meta. But the point is, we've now got the two components of our expression within this reusable element, right? We've got the number of credits coming in as a property to this reusable element. And then the reusable element itself is going and fetching the cost 
her credit, which it knows where to find that information. In our case, it's coming from this admin config object. And now we just need a place where we actually do the calculation. So what I like to do, I would actually create another variable group and you call this something like final cost. It's actually here that we write this expression, the number of credits times the cost per credit. So we set the value here to be, right? the property coming into this reusable element, the number of credits multiplied by the cost per credit that we're storing here, right? That we're storing here. So that is the variable cost per credits number, okay? So right now that calculation is working within this reusable element. All we need to do now is provide an output, provide a way for this value to be used by other parts of our application. And that's where again, we come to reusable element properties. This is really where the magic is because here we might use a naming convention like this output, or you can add an emoji here. You can do whatever you want. We're going to set this to be a dynamic value. It's obviously a number, the output of this expression to find the cost associated with a particular promotion duration is a number. And we need to make sure that we've got optional here ticks. This is a crucial part because that allows us to add a default value here within this property. And we can simply point this to that variable final cost. So the output of this expression becomes available within a reusable element property. And what that means, if we go back to our original pop-up, right, where we've got this text element here that's doing the calculation, we can actually clear all of this out and simply plop our new logic reusable element, which is doing this pipe calculation for us somewhere on the page. Now, very handily, I've pre-prepared a floating group here, which I just use as a container for elements that aren't actually in the interface anywhere, but are just there to hold on to logic like this price calculator output. So this is just a floating group. It's set to float relative to both. It's got 0% opacity. It's a one by one pixel thing and it's floating beneath the page. So for all intents and purposes, this doesn't exist to your users. It's just there so that we as the developer can configure certain data that we want to be available to other elements, other components, workflows, logic, that kind of thing. And so within this hidden elements floating group, I'm going to add this price calculator reusable element. So I'm going to plop that in here, right? This is just like a folder, a hidden folder for these variables for this logic. And all we have to do for this to work is feed it a number of credits. And the number of credits in this context will come from this dropdown, which is holding on to a promotion length. And each promotion length, as we saw, is holding a credit cost. That's the value that we need here to put into our price calculator formula. So we're gonna point this price calculator logic reusable, we're gonna point this number of credits field to the value inside of that dropdown, which is gonna be a promotion length option, each one with a credit cost associated. And then what we're gonna get is this output. And that output is something that we can add within a dynamic expression. So where it say this will cost, I can now insert dynamic data and I can look for this price calculator and I can actually access now this output field. And I should probably call it I didn't realize we were being so vague in the naming here. This is the output final cost, right? That's the name of this output here. That's the output from the formula, okay? So that's what this text value is now gonna show. And of course, we still wanna do a little bit of formatting at the end here. And if we go and view that in run mode now, if I'm gonna promote any kind of post, I will select an option here. And just as before, we're seeing that calculated cost up here, but we know now that we're doing it in a little bit more of a clever way, right? It's coming from a specific encapsulated module, this price calculator reusable, which now we can just use in multiple contexts. And anytime that we want to update how that formula works, right? Maybe we want to multiply the final cost here by some discount value or do other funny things, right? We know that we just have to go to that price calculator module to modify it. And of course, what's more important is that we can now plop this in other parts of our application, like this promoter post pop-up that we have. And the structure of this is we've got a repeating group here, which is fed by the promotion length options, right? These guys here from our promotion length option set. 
and then it displays various things about them. So what we could do inside of this repeating group, right, as long as we've got somewhere where we can put our price calculator. So at the cell container level, I'd probably set this to be aligned to parent so that we can overlay elements. And then within the cell, I would add here my price calculator. So I'll pop that in there and that's just gonna sit tidily away. It doesn't affect the UI structure at all, but it's within the cell of a repeating group that is being used for a promotion link option. And then we just feed this, right, with the number of credits for the promotion length option inside of this particular repeating group cell, right? So I can just sim simply say the current cells promotion length credit cost, right? That's the first part of this equation. And now this text element here, which is meant to be displaying what the cost is, right? This is our text cost. Because this lives inside of the same repeating group cell as the price calculator, right? It can access this instance of the price calculator inside of this particular repeating group cell. So I can grab that price calculator's output. Of course, you want to format it as a currency. And if we go and run this, I want to promote my post again. You see that we are seeing the cost there associated for each of these options. So you gotta be using this everywhere. This is a major bubble hack in a good way, in a very good way. If you wanna view the editor for this application as a reference while you set things up in your own application, I'll leave the link in the description for this video. Otherwise, happy bubbling.